Hello everyone, I'm Juan Salazar, Creative Product Manager of Nuke. And today we're at Seagraph, and at Seagraph we normally show all these shiny and beautiful things, and new things. And instead of that, this year I have decided to show you all the dirty tips and tricks uh, that normally I travel around the year, I see all of you around the world, and I've been listening the same questions and questions on how to do certain bits in Nuke Studio. So I decided to make all these tips and tricks out of that information that is coming from all the artists around the world. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to pretend I'm a VFX house. I'm actually doing some shots for a different vendor. So I'm going to do the conforming from some shots of VFX shots for someone else. Uh, I'm going to run the whole project. First, I'm going to start in Hero. Then I'm going to go into Hero Player for an artist to work and do the review. And then I'm going to move into Nuke Studio. And I'm going to do all through this, just showing you different bits. I'm not going to go through the whole process. I'm going to just show you different tips and tricks on what to do in each process. I'm also going to do this as if I, if I was connected into a pipeline. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we're going to be releasing some Python scripts so you can connect to a pipeline or sample scripts to explain you how to connect Nuke Studio and Hero into a pipeline. So with that said, let's actually start this. So what I'm going to do, the first thing, as always, is I'm going to import my EDL. And I'm going to go and import EDL and open. And I'm going to go OK. And there you are. Cool. So I have my timeline. These are BFX shots. I don't have a whole sequence. As you can see, I have holes on my sequence. It's just the BFX show shots that were sent to me by the main vendor. So what I'm going to do now is conform. I'm going to not take too much time on this. And the reason why is because uh, thanks to the guys on Open Drives, I'm actually driving the whole session from a centralized storage that I have just in the back. So have a look at that. But it's amazing because all I have to do is just go open. And I'm going to conform this in full 4K, is 120-something shots, and it's going to go straight into it. And there you are. That's it. 121 shots conform at 4K in less than a minute. So I'm going to move that to 4K. Let's make sure that that's 4K for DCP. And now we can see that's my 4K footage. I can actually press play. And I'm playing back from the centralized storage directly at my frame rate without any problems. So that is the first tip. Get, make sure you are connected to a good centralized storage so you can do all this work quite fast. So again, I have all my shots. I can review them. I'm not going to go through the doing the matching to the um, uh, to a reference frame and so on, because we I always do that. And you just saw Jim doing it as well. So instead of that, I want to give you some other tips on how to do some editorial work. So the first thing I want to show you is about the spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet is probably the most powerful tool that you have in Nuke Studio. And I find it amazing that a lot of people don't work with it. One of the big questions I get asked all the time is, how do I do changes by numbers? Um, so in this case, I know by a fact that all my shots are actually off on the actual handles. I'm supposed to have eight handles at the front of all my shots, and I don't have eight handles in front of all my shots. If I zoom around here, I'll be able to see that some of them have different handles. This one, for example, have five. Um, so I can actually check what is going on. And I'll have to do it manually or do it by hand here. But I have a very shaky hand, especially on a stage. So doing anything with the mouse is not going to go perfect. So what I want to do is check on my spreadsheet how I can do that. So the first thing is I have my destination times and my source in. But this is my time code. And I need my time code to do my conforming. So instead of working in time code, what I'm going to do is change this quite quickly to using time. Um, frames. And by doing that, I can see that my shots, because they are coming from a different vendor, they're already organized in the right uh, number of frames. So it's in 1,001. So I can actually go and select all my shots here. And all I'm going to do, let's actually put it on source order. So I can actually select them in source order. So I'm going to grab everything that is within 1,000 frames all the way down here. Let's actually grab up to here. And now all I need to do is a simple thing to do the change. You can always double click in any of these fields, and you can start doing maths. I can actually say, I'm supposed to have eight frames at the front. So I'm going to say, plus eight frames, enter. And I just changed my whole timeline. And I just did a whole edit in a single couple of clicks. That is something that I can do with group of shots. Remember that anything that you select on the timeline gets selected on the spreadsheet. So I can find those clips, 
do changes very, very easily. So that was the first thing. Obviously, you can do that with any type of um, things in um, the editorial. One of the main things I get asked normally is about retiming. How do I do retiming in an actual detailed way? Um, and that is a very easy way. I can actually go and say, here, just change that value. And I can say 150. But that's the kind of the normal case. But what happens when editorial comes back to me and say, you know what? Do a retime where this shot is 20 frames longer, but it stays on the same in and out. So how do I do that? So one of the th cool things, and very few people know this about Nick Studio, is this little cog icon here. What it allows you to do is go and choose how the behavior is for all of these fields on your spreadsheet. So I can come in here, I can change, for example, the display of the speed between FPSs and percentages. I can change how am I going to do my retime behaviors based on duration or based on the source duration. But I can also have even more settings about it. I can actually decide how all my sourcing out, destination in, destination out, is going to change my retiming methods. So I can actually go, for example, in this case, and say destination out, set it to retime. Normally set to trim out. I'm going to set it to uh, retime. And I can go into my destination out for that shot. And I'm going to say add plus 10 frames. And now I just actually got that read time to 93.1, which is not an exact number, but it's the 10 frames that I was asked to add to that shot with the right read time. If they would have given me the value, the percentage value from any of the editorial packages, I probably wouldn't have been able to translate that value in. So this is the way that you can actually do very precise editorial work um, by adding the exact number of frames that you actually need on the different shots. So again, it's a lot about the value of using the different settings that you have to do your retiming or trimming of your shots. Um, one of the other things that you can do is you can select several shots at a time and then compress them or expand them together by just plusing numbers into the spreadsheet, which is also very useful. So that was the first tip that I wanted to give you. With that one came out another one the other day that I was very, very surprised. Quite a senior artist came in around and asked me, hey, how do you select clips in the timeline? I, I'm a massive editor on my hotkeys. I'm not much of using my mouse and moving around. I like my hotkeys. How do I edit with my hotkeys? And it's very simple. All you need is to have a numpad on your keyboard, right? So if you have a numpad on your keyboard, all you need to do is press 8, and that selects a clip. And then you can actually move around with the arrow keys, so 6 and 5. And I'm four, I can move one side, the other side, right? I can decide that that shot I wanted in a new track. So I can do shift and comma. Uh, sorry, okay, shift and uh, 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 what happened? That always happens when you actually want. Sorry, alt, that's my fault. Alt and comma, right? And I can move it a, a track up. I can then move back down, move, select a different one, select that one, move that one up. Let's go down again. Let's find another one. Let's do that. Let's push that one up. And now the thing is, again, you can select through your tracks and through the different things. So I don't have to move between all my clips. I can actually move between the different tracks. This is not new on any editorial package, but it's quite a little trick, a nice trick that a lot of people didn't realize existed in Nuke Studio. Um, the other thing that is quite nice with this is, again, about if you want to do a specific editing. So let's say I want to move on a specific frame. and my shaky hands, again, I don't want to be trimming that by a frame. It, you see, I ended up on six, six, four. Ah, I cannot do that exactly. So the other thing I can do is just go to my cut. And what I'm going to do is, again, press eight. And if I'm on a cut, I'm actually selecting the cut. And if I move with my clip, you can see the, the um, orange line that is moving between the cuts. So now I can actually go and move into that one. So, oops, where am I? There you are. And I can just use, again, my dot and comma to start expanding my shot. So I can decide I want to use, start expanding that frame at a time. Or I can do shift and dot, and I can actually recontract it by 10 frames, right? So that is the way that you can actually do editorial work with your keyboard. Um, it's a very powerful way. It's how you want to do very detailed editing uh, in a very, very easy way, all right? So, Saying that, let's say that those are my main kind of editorial tips and tricks that I wanted to give you. I can select several things at the time. I'm going to move those guys down back into my timeline. And I'm going to start prepping 
my timeline for uh, my whole team to work on. So I could do several things here. I could be showing you what I normally show or renaming the shots using rename by sequence uh, but sequentially and do the whole thing that I normally do at Seagraph or at different shows. Uh, but I have done that too much. So what I wanted to show you is a different way of doing it. And that's with a database. So what I want to do is publish this to a database. We will be putting this on the Python example so you can test it out. And this time I run a Python and now I have a database settings that I can set up my database where that is. I'm going to do it in the simplest way, which is literally with a spreadsheet, right? I'm not going to use anything fancy. It could be using f track, shotgun, name, any of those guys. But in this case, I'm not going to be using simply a spreadsheet uh, on my small studio. So I'm going to take that spreadsheet and all I'm going to do is select my shots. I'm going to show you this quite quickly. I have a spreadsheet empty that is waiting for that. So I'm going to be here and all I'm going to do is going to right click Shot management, right shot data. And that has been updated onto my spreadsheet. So if I go now to my spreadsheet, I can actually go reload that. And now I have all my shots on my spreadsheet. Right? What that means is that I can have someone from production or from coordina a coordinator going and setting up all the right naming conventions that I want for my time for my different shots. I can be adding tasks to what is going to happen, and I can add even BFX requirements of what I need to do on the shots. So this is very common by using an, a, a shot manager uh, in, in all the packages. So what I'm going to do is I already have one that I have done already. So I have done my different naming conventions. So I have called what the names of the shots is going to be. I have added different tasks that like light, comp, BFX, and everything to the different shots. And I have actually added a nice comment like, do some nice comping, right? Because that's what directors always ask us to. So what I'm going to do is move to hero player this time. So now I'm an artist on my desk. And I arrive that morning from, and the coordinator comes around and tells me, your shots are ready so you can start working on your shots. So what I'm going to do as, a, as an artist, I, I open hero player. I have actually changed the interface a little bit so you see some different things. Because uh, as an artist, I don't need all the complexity of Hero or Hero uh, or New Studio. I'm just simply putting uh, my project being very simply and a timeline and my viewer. So what I'm going to do is just go into um, my shot manager. And I'm going to say import from spreadsheet. So I'm connecting back to my database. And I'm going to go import from spreadsheet. It's going to go find that. It's going to take two seconds to check that up. And now it has built a whole timeline for me um, called BFX with the date of today and everything that I'm doing right now. And you can see now I have a bunch of clips. And the first thing I can see is they are colored. And they are tagged. And there is notes. And there is things on them, right? So the reason why we have colors, if you have a new, uh, new 11.2, uh, now we have colors in the timeline. So you can set colors for different file formats. But you can use the API to actually connect it to the uh, tasks that you're going to do. So in this case, anything that is green is a comp or Anything that's brown has effects on it. And I can actually check whatever else. And very, very easily, I can know what the shots are about in a very visual way. Um, but I'm an artist, and I'm supposed to work in a couple of these shots. I'm not supposed to work in all of the shots. So what I want to do is I also um, kind of took out of the dust. Um, uh, I had a script that I built a really long time ago with a really nice developer called Zach um, that he used to work with us. And he built this really nice script for me. Uh, to find the tags and do some work with the tagging. Um, and Rick, our main developer in Nuke Studio, did the favor for me for, to clean it up and put it into the 11 version. So I'll be putting this on Wikipedia quite soon. Um, and it's the tag shots. And what it allows me to do is I can refresh my tags, and I can see the tags that I have on that sequence. And then I can go and say, OK, I want to see the shots that have comments for the BFX requirements. And I get my shot that has my BFX requirement. I can click on my shot. And I can look at that, and that has the BFX requirement tag, and it shows me exactly what it is in there for me to work on. So I can very, very easily can look and tag the things. I can actually look at the shots. I can say which shots have comp, or which shots are comp and lighting. And suddenly I can start looking at all the shots that I'm supposed to be working on, or I have to jump into that day. Um, this is the way that an artist will load. Obviously, I can just go into my screen. I'm going to here, and I start looking at my shots. And I can start playing the shots, have a good look, play that. That's the shot I'm supposed to be working on, and move on. So that is how you actually set up um, an artist to go into 
uh, the timeline and using Hero Play, review and know which shots he's going to be working on at the start of the day. And he can build these timelines all throughout as the database is being built, I can always go and import that database and import that shot, and I'll be able to get those timelines dynamically created without having, if you have seen, I haven't saved any files at any point, right? And I'm already transferring data between everyone in, into my um, job. So that is how an artist, again, and using some uh, Python examples that we're going to put around for you to connect into that pipeline. So the next bit I want to talk to you is now I'm a supervisor. And I have my whole timeline done, right? And my artists have been working and busy working on the whole thing. And you can see what I have here is all my plates. And I also have all the shots. I have already colored them uh, based on what is ready for review. So in my office, actually, what happens is anything that is uh, approved is green. Anything that is in process is actually orange. Anything that is not approved is actually red. So if I zoom a little bit, you can see the different things. One of the really cool things of the new color system that we added in 11.2 is the ability to add it into the version. So if I actually come into this shot, I can very, very easily look at the version and you can see how the versions went. And I can see out of 10 versions, I actually got, it was an until version four that the director actually was happy with the direction that we were going with the graphics that we were putting on the shot. So I can actually go and say, go to version one, right? And that was the plate. So let's actually zoom in to that. I can go into version two and check that. OK, oh, great. Version three, director is still not happy. Version four, OK, the guy starts going happy. And now I have a direction where to go. And if I keep moving, you're going to see how this is just iterations of the same graphics until I get to my final delivery shot that got approved. So that is how I can actually track all my shots and everything as a supervisor. I can have a very easy way of reviewing what is happening with the arts and how I actually have the whole thing. And again, because I can connect this to my pipeline, I can make sure that is, everything is tagged. It could be done by a coordinator or it could be done by me directly in here. Um, another thing that is quite nice is we updated the way we search in the project bin and into um, the spreadsheet. One that I find interesting that no one knew before or that they didn't know exactly is that you can actually search using tags. I can take my tag and I want to say, you know what? I want to check all the shots that are awaiting approval. So I'm going to drag that awaiting approval into my search properties here on my, on my spreadsheet. And I'm going to drop that in. And now I have all my shots that I have for approval. I can grab the shots. And if I, I can see which shots they are, or I can do something else, I can actually do old click onto any shot, and that's going to take me to that shot directly. So I can very quickly can go and start reviewing which shot I need to go and review as a supervisor that day. What do I have ready for me? And obviously, I can just press play. Press play, I said. There you are. And I can press play, and that's my playback going in. Again, I'm playing 4K, and I'm playing out of the open drives um, directly. So very quickly, I can do all my searching, all my review. The other thing that we did with the searching is if you want to find things, sometimes in this project, I have around 1,500 clips in, 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 in and out, some, some, some around those numbers. Um, and I have a lot of shots. So one of the things that we added for the searching is the ability to match criteria in different ways. So I can actually go and say, you know what? I want to review uh, sequence eight. So I'm going to say S08, and I'm starting to get clips directly. Uh, but the thing is, sequence eight also belongs to all the plates, or the animation plates, or these other bits and pieces. So one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to put a space, and I'm going to say underscore comp. And now I know that all the things that are related to comp are starting to show in there. But there's still too many. And the reason why is because I'm finding for any criteria. So it's looking for anything that has S08 or is underscore comp. So there's a lot of stuff that could match to that. Uh, could be the name, actually, of the raw material. So I can actually say, no, 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 I want to match all the criteria. And it directly, I just got all the shots that are related to my comp versions for that show. You can even include um, the file format. So I can actually go and say, you know what? I only want EXRs. Oh, I don't have EXRs on that. Oops. There you go. So I only want to review the QuickTime. So I can very quickly, very easily filter up and maybe create a new sequence out of the shots that I want to see. 
So I can take that, create a new sequence, drop that, and start playing that back straight away onto my um, edit. So that is most of the stuff I want to show you. I'm, not miss I'm missing something that I know, so I'm going to check why is that I'm missing, because I always miss something. It's always on my brain that I always miss. Yes, that is a very important thing that I wanted to show you. As a supervisor, normally, I'm reviewing shots with a director or with the, or the BFX supervisor from the next company. And normally, that happens through SDI or through a main monitor out. So I'm going to set up my monitor out very quickly. So I'm going to go into Window. And I'm going to find my monitor out. And I'm going to set it up as a floating window. And I'm going to go and set it up as, um, let's say, rec. And let's find that window. There you are. Come back. There you are. So now I have my whole show. And I can look at it here. Uh, and clearly, if I press play, I'll then be looking at that in the monitor out. Now, there is something that we did. We did a lot of work on monitor out. And it's how I want to do comparison of things. How can I not just look at the image, but how can I look at comparing different shots. I want to compare the previous version to the new version. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my monitor out somewhere so it doesn't bother me for a bit. There you are. So what I'm going to do is let's say I want to compare the versions of my shot. right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and say open in project bin, project view. There you are. So if I clear my uh, search, there you are. I have my actual clip. I can also open my clips in something called version bins. So if I right click, I can do open in version bin. And now I have all my versions of that given clip. That allows me to then take any of those and drop them into the viewer and compare them with the shot that I'm doing. So I can say, let's actually compare this to one of the pre-approved, uh, non-approved shots. So I can grab that and drop it into the B buffer. And I have the A buffer and the B buffer. So I can load different things onto my viewer. I'm going to drop it there, and you can see that now I have the two clips. A good way of doing this always is actually using um, my horizontal, for example, so I can compare the two shots side by side, um, and I can actually move. Now, what th people don't realize, and I have seen a lot of people having issues with this, is that you can control the play hits separately for these two play hits. And it's how do you do that? Well, you just need to click on one of the two sides, and you'll be able to see that. Now, the best way of doing that is by using, actually, the color picker. And the reason why is because it shows you which timeline you're actually looking at. So if I actually go and look, now I can control my, my right one. So I'm looking at my B buffer, and I can control which frame I want to see. So let's say I want to look, actually, when she's looking forward, I want to see her looking front. And I'm going to go and control my A buffer, and I can go and find my shot that I was working on. Um, and I can go and say, you know what? Uh, I think it's shot S9. So I'm going to go into S9. Let's just Alt click. And I'm on my shot here. So now I can go and compare the two shots. I can zoom on them, right? Can do different things. The important bit of this is that I can actually do this through the monitor out, uh, which we have improved. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get out of um, full screen mode very quickly. And I'm going to just make my Nukes 2 smaller, if I can. Come on. It's going to go on the eh, if there you are. So I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to make Nuke Studio a little bit small here. Let's put that on frame. Uh, let's put that hold. There you are. So what I'm going to do is quite quickly, I'm just going to go and set my monitor out to not the active viewer, but I want to set it up to my A and B. And what it's going to allow me to do is show everything that is happening on my viewer on how it is happening. So if I actually go in here, I'll be able to see my two shots. I'll be able to zoom in, check the different detail throughout the shot, and see what is happening. Um, so you can always use the A and B to do that and being able to compare between the two things. Again, I'm actually playing back 4K and the whole thing. So I can actually go, do this, play back, come back, and see the two things. Zoom into the different places. I'm going to go back into the B, and I'm going to go and look at the right shot. right? So that is how you can use the monitor out to do your review. Obviously, in this case, I don't have an SDI out. So I cannot show you in a separate monitor. That's due to the projections and things. Uh, but you know how the setup goes. So it's the idea of being able to do this with your teams on dailies or with your director on a full review or with the other BFX supervisor from another company doing it um, through any connections. So 
that is almost everything that I wanted to show you today. Um, I think that is that said. All the, the, the tips and tricks. So it's not about the shiny, shiny things. It's about the little bits and pieces. And that is it. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you later. Bye.